Hey there tech enthusiasts welcome back to our channel today we are diving into a fundamental concept of the internet that you might have heard of but might not fully understand dns that's right we are demystifying dns and breaking down what it is and how it works so if you have ever wondered how you are able to reach your favorite websites with just a click this video is for you let's get started and before we begin if you are someone who is interested in building a career in cyber security by graduating from the best universities or a professional who elicits to switch careers with cyber security by learning from the experts then try giving a shot to simply learn's postgraduate program in cyber security with modules from MIT Schwarzman College of Engineering the course link is mentioned in the description box that will navigate you to the course page where you can find a complete overview of the program being offered and if these are the types of videos you would like to watch then hit the subscribe button like and press on the bell icon to never miss on future content so stay tuned with us until the end of this video and don't forget to register your opinion in the comment section below so now starting with what is dns so what actually is dns so dns stands for domain name system and it's like the internet's address book just like how you use names to identify people instead of their phone numbers dns helps you access websites using human readable names like www.example.com instead of complex ip addresses imagine you want to visit a website like www.example.com computers though don't understand words like we do they use numbers called ip addresses to find websites this is where dns comes in it's like a translator that converts the website name into an ip address so a computer knows where to go so this is what is dns domain name system now moving on to how does dns work that is a great question and let's break down the process step by step so the first step is request initiation when you type a website's name in your browser and hit enter your computer sends a request to a dns resolver or dns server often provided by your internet service provider isp let's see how this works with a real life example Imagine you want to visit www.google.com. You type www.google.com into a browser and hit enter. Your computer doesn't know where www.google.com is, so it asks a special server called a DNS server or resolver for help. Step two: recursive DNS resolver. The DNS resolver is like a librarian who knows where all the books or websites are kept. It checks if it is already knows the IP address for www.google.com. If not it goes on a quest to find it. And step 3, iterative queries. The resolver starts asking other DNS servers starting from the root DNS or root server then moving to the top level domain server TLD servers and finally to the authoritative DNS servers that is responsible for the specific domain you are looking for. This is called iterative querying. the dns resolver starts asking other servers like the root server and the top level domain server do you know where www.google.com or www.example.com is they might not know either but they will direct the resolver to the right place and then there comes the step 4 that is authoritative dns server when the authoritative dns server is found it provides the ip address for the requested domain name step 5 caching The resolver not only returns the IP address to your computer but also stores it for a certain period in its cache. This caching helps speed up future requests for the same domain. Step 6: Loading the website. Armed with the IP address, your computer can now contact the web server where the website is hosted, requesting the content and voila, the website loads in your browser. So this was how DNS works. And now moving on to DNS records. But how does the authoritative DNS server know which IP address corresponds to a domain name? That's where DNS records comes in. And now we'll see the types of DNS records. So these are the types of DNS records. So the first record is A record that maps a domain name to an IPv4 address. Then comes the IPv6 address record that maps a domain name to an IPv6 address. Then comes the canonical name record that creates an LIS for a domain name. then comes the mail exchanger record that specifies mail servers responsible for receiving email and in the process of loading a web page there are four key dns servers that play different roles and the four 
different DNS servers are DNS recursor, the librarian. Then we have a root name server, the library index. Then we have TLD name server, a specific rack of books. And then authoritative name server, the dictionary. Now we'll see them one by one and in an elaborative manner. The first is DNS recursor, the librarian. So think of the DNS recursor as a helpful librarian. When you, the reader, want to find a specific book in a vast library, you ask the librarian for assistance. Similarly, the DNS recursor is like a server that listens to requests from your computer, usually through web browsers or other applications. Its job is to find the answer to your question. If it doesn't know the answer, it embarks on a quest to find it for you. So this was about DNS recursor. Now we will move to another DNS server that is root name server the library index. So picture the root server as the index in the library. It doesn't have all the books but it knows where to look for them. When you ask the librarian DNS recursor for a book that is IP address, they first check the index root name server to get a clue about where to find it. The root server directs the librarian to more specific locations. Moving on to the next DNS server that is TLD name server, a specific rack of books. Imagine the top level domain TLD server has a specific rack of books in the library. This rack is dedicated to a particular category of books. In the DNS world, it's the next step in the search for an IP address. For example, if you are looking for a book that is IP address related to example.com, the TLD server is like the rack labeled .com. It takes you one step closer to finding the right book that is IP address. And then we have authoritative name server, the dictionary. So now, Picture the authoritative name server as a dictionary on a rack of books. This dictionary translates specific book names into their definitions, IP addresses. It's the final stop in your quest for information. When the librarian or DNS recursor reaches the authoritative name server, it's like finding the exact dictionary that holds the answer. If the authoritative name server has the requested information, it gladly shares the IP addresses with the DNS recursor or librarian who then passes it on to you. So these four DNS servers work together, just like a librarian, an index, a rack of books and a dictionary to help you find and access websites on the internet. And I have an announcement for you guys. That is, if you want to kickstart your career as a cybersecurity professional in six months, then try giving a shot to simply learn Caltech Cybersecurity Bootcamp. The course link or the bootcamp link is mentioned in the description box that will navigate you to the bootcamp page. You can find a complete overview of the program being offered. And now moving on to the three types of DNS queries. So there are three types of DNS queries. The first one is a recursive query. The second is iterative query. And the third is non-recursive query. So we will have a little information about all the three queries. So starting with the recursive query, imagine you are asking for directions and you insist that the person you are asking must provide you with the exact location you are looking for. Similarly, in a recursive query, a DNS client like your GPS asks a DNS server typically a DNS recursive resolver to either give it the exact information it's seeking that is the requested resource record or tell it if the information isn't available by returning an error message. So this was about recursive query. Then we have iterative query. Now think of you asking for directions but this time you are open to getting the best possible advice. In an iterative query the DNS client allows a DNS server to provide the best answer it can find. If the first DNS server queried doesn't have the information you need, it doesn't leave you stranded. Instead, it gives you directions to another person that is DNS server, who might know more about the place you are looking for. This process continues until you reach someone who can help or until you run out of options. And then we have non-recursive query. Lastly, picture a scenario where you are asking someone for directions and you already know they have the information. You are not asking them to go out of their way. You just want them to share what they already know. In a non-recursive query, a DNS resolver client asks a DNS server for information that the server already has access to. This could be because the server is authoritative for the information like the local expert or because it has saved the information in its memory like your notes. This approach is efficient because it prevents unnecessary work and reduces the load on other servers. So these are the types of DNS queries. Now moving on to DNS security and challenges. So DNS domain name system is a fundamental part of the internet, but like any system, it has its share of security concerns and challenges. 
Let's explore these issues. The first is DNS spoofing. That is DNS cache poisoning. This is like someone sneaking a fake address into your address book. DNS spoofing happens when an attacker tricks a DNS resolver or DNS server into associating a legitimate domain name with a malicious IP address. And its impact is it can redirect users to fraudulent websites leading to phishing attacks or malware downloads. Number 2. Distributed Denial of Service DDoS Attacks So DDoS attacks flood DNS servers with an overwhelming amount of traffic, causing them to become slow or unavailable. It's like jamming all the roads leading to a place so no one can get there. And this impact like this can disrupt online services and make websites inaccessible. Then we have DNSSEC that is DNS security extensions. So DNS security extensions adds an extra layer of security by digitally signing DNS data. It's like putting a seal on a letter to ensure it hasn't been tampered with. And it benefits or it helps prevent DNS spoofing and ensures the integrity of DNS responses. Then we have cache poisoning mitigation. To counter cache poisoning, DNS servers use various techniques like source port randomization and query ID randomization to make it harder for attackers to predict the response. And it benefits these measures enhance DNS security. Then we have zone transfers. Zone transfers are part of DNS replication between authoritative DNS servers. If not properly secured, they can be exploited by attackers to gain information about a domain's infrastructure. So mitigation about this is that is implementing access controls and securing zone transfers can prevent unauthorized access. Then we have DNS tunneling. DNS tunneling is a technique used by malware to bypass security measures. It disguises malicious data within DNS queries and responses. In fact, it allows malware to communicate covertly or covertly with command and control servers. Now let's take a minute to hear from our learners who have experienced massive success in their careers. Hi, I'm Philip. I'm 61 years old and last year I upskilled with Simply Learn's postgraduate program in cybersecurity after working 30 years in the IT sector in various different profiles. I'm happy to tell you that I was able to clear and pass my CISSP and CCSP certification exams on the first attempt after taking the course. The course, I must say, was packed with practical examples. It was led by highly skilled and certified instructors with many companies before as a, as a security analyst and the architect on a contract basis. But I needed some stability, which I got with the job I just started with Infosys as a cybersecurity consultant. Happened on the first. And if these are the types of videos you would like to watch, then hit the subscribe button, like, and press the bell icon to never miss on future. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.